Hello everyone and welcome back to your daily government and financial news update. As always, I'm interested in hearing your thoughts on everything, so make sure to give this video a like, but also leave a comment giving your thoughts on everything that's currently going on. Okay, so all over the news, we always hear about the last tragic mass shooting incident, whether it be at a school, a mall, or wherever else. This time, fortunately, the tables turned, and this is something that actually happened last week on Thursday, but a lot of people I don't think have actually heard about it. So at an elementary school in the state of Alabama, there was a man that was aggressively trying to gain entry into the building. This was during summer school. There was a few students in there. And so he was trying to pull open multiple doors, which fortunately were locked at the time. And then that caused the school to go into lockdown mode because they're wondering what is this guy trying to do? Why is he trying to get into the building? So on that day, just 34 children were inside the school for a summer literacy camp. And when a school resource officer responded to the incident, a physical altercation then took place between the two people. And then eventually it led into the man being shot and killed. Now, it wasn't known whether or not the man, which of course I will not name per usual, because these types of people don't deserve any extra fame or notoriety, whether or not he had a gun or any type of weapon, but he did try to take the gun from the resource officer once he arrived on scene. So if he took the gun, it very well could have turned into a bad situation. So I'm definitely thankful that for one, all the doors in the school were locked, and for two, that the school had a resource officer close by who was able to handle the situation. Because who really knows what would have happened if the doors of the school had been unlocked and if the school didn't have a resource officer on site. Also, as far as gun control related news, over in Ohio, the governor of Ohio, uh, Republican Mike DeWine, recently signed into law a bill that would allow employees at a school to actually carry a weapon. Now, it can't be any employee. Um, currently, the law is enacted would require up to 24 hours of training before an employee can go armed. And then of course, up to eight hours of annual training. Whether or not this will be a good thing or not, we will wait and see. Of course, DeWine did mention this isn't something that he necessarily wants, that he would rather just make sure that there is a resource officer on site. That's something that he would rather have. In addition to that, they're also going to be including $100 million for school security upgrades in school. So that's going to be a great thing. All doors should be locked, number one. These doors should never be unlocked. We should be making sure whoever is getting into the school has a proper ID that they actually have a kid in school and it's not just some crazy lunatic trying to get in. And then of course there should be some other security such as cameras around the building to make sure that if anyone is potentially going up to the building, we could put the school into lockdown mode, make sure that if any kids are outside, perhaps they're in gym class or anything else that we get these kids safely back into the building. And in some other news, as if anything could potentially get any worse with the current economy, we are now officially in a bear market with the S&P 500 closing yesterday by more than 21% below its all-time record close, which reached last January. Since we consider a 20% decline in the S&P 500 on a closing basis from its previous peak to define a bear market, we are now officially in one. Now, even though we were in another bear market as recent as two years ago, that was more of a market caused by the pandemic and of course shutting the entire world down, basically all businesses closing. This time around, it's completely different with rising inflation, which in turn will cause the Fed to raise the rates to fight against it. And in general, when the Federal Reserve cuts interest rate, it causes the market to go up. However, on the flip side of things, when the Fed raises interest rates, it causes the stock market to go down. So we're basically fighting a couple of different things. We're fighting the stock market and we're also fighting inflation. So the first priority of course is fighting inflation. So to fight inflation, they're going to be raising rates. The problem with that is when you raise rates, of course, is that's going to cause most likely a decline in the market as well. So it's pretty much like if you, if you help one thing in lowering inflation, on the flip side of things, you're gonna hurt the market. But if you try to help the market by lowering rates, guess what, that might just cause inflation to increase that much more. And so we're most likely going to continue to see the Fed raise interest rates over the next year, which in turn, you guessed it, will most likely result in more dips in the market. Now, the last market before 2020 took place in October of 2007 and lasted just 17 months. Since the modern S&P 500 index started in the late 1920s, the average bear market has had an average drop of 38% and lasted an average of almost 19 months. 
The longest bear market lasted 62 months. This was between 1937 and 1946. And so right now we're just five to six months in and down around 21%. So who really knows how much longer this can go on? Perhaps we finally get inflation under control, Russia issues a ceasefire on Ukraine, and Republicans take back control of Congress in November, and then maybe we could see things begin to start turning around. But again, who really knows how long it will last? Additionally, Bitcoin is also down once again. At the moment, at the time of filming this video, Bitcoin is down to $22,148. That's down another 1.39% on the one day. On the five day, we are down 26.37%. On the one month, about the same, 26.34%. So it is really tumbling here. We're not really sure how much further it can go down. Year to date, we're down 53.60%. And then if we go to one year, it's down 45.35%. So not really a good time to invest in anything, particularly Bitcoin. If you're in the stock market, you might be a little bit safer. But this might also be a great buying opportunity because we're getting these very cheap prices. I mean, if you had bought in not long ago, Bitcoin was at $65,000. That was pretty much the peak. If you had bought in at that time, it would have been a really bad time to buy in. You would have lost about half your wealth that you had in there. So if you're buying in at these prices and we begin to see a rebound and it shoots up again to say 65,000 or potentially even higher, you can make a very good return on your money. Now, Bitcoin is more of a storage of value rather than an investment. So like if you're investing in Apple, for example, or maybe an index fund, that's more of an investment into a company, whereas Bitcoin is pretty much like a digital gold. So it's, it's supposed to be kind of a safe haven, I guess, but you know, lately we're not, we're not really seeing that as a safe haven. Whereas if you're just holding dollars, you're losing quite a bit of money. As I mentioned, inflation up eight to 10% pretty much year over year. Whereas with Bitcoin year over year, you would have been losing like 45%. Now, over time, this could, potentially, this could potentially rebound and could potentially, you know, not be as, you know, crazy as far as volatility goes, but we'll pretty much have to wait and see. Maybe in the next 10 years, it'll be, you know, not as volatile. But again, with everything going on with inflation, the war in Ukraine, and just a lot of overall uncertainty, this is a very tough time to invest. If I were to make my own recommendations, this is not financial advice. If I are gonna make a recommendation for myself, what I'm personally doing is I'm dollar cost averaging down into the stock market. And of course, I would recommend myself to do the same for Bitcoin, just because the price is going down. If you dollar cost average down and you're able to buy in a little bit at a time as the price goes down, you're probably going to fare much better, at least historically speaking, than if you were just to wait and sit on the sideline. Now, if you haven't yet started investing or you would perhaps like to get a few free stocks, Webull is currently partnering up with me where you can gain six free stocks if you sign up for an account and make a deposit as little as one penny. You can take advantage of that offer by clicking the link, which I will have in the first pinned comment below, and I will also make a link in the description box as well. And so with everything under the Biden administration really going sour, Florida Senator Rick Scott is taking full advantage by releasing a series of TV ads targeting the president and promoting his own Rescue America plan. Scott says that Biden destroyed America's economy, it's very true, and also called on the president to resign. Here is Biden's response. You called out Rick Scott a little while ago in your remarks. Earlier today, anticipating your remarks, he said, and I'm just quoting here, that uh, the best thing, the most effective thing Joe Biden can do to solve the inflation crisis he created is resign. He's the problem. Resign. The senator added That's later. The senator added later, Joe Biden is unwell. He's unfit for office. He's incoherent, incapacitated, and confused. These are his words. Offering you a chance to respond to that. I think the man has a problem. According to a recent analysis by Moody's Analytics, the average American household has to spend, get this, an extra $460 every single month thanks to the recent Biden price hikes. Having inflation at 8.5% on a year-over-year -year basis compared with the average inflationary amount, which is typically right around 2%, is causing the American household to spend $346 more per month to purchase exactly the same goods and services as they normally would. And this certainly adds up. 
we're all feeling it. Meanwhile, at the pump, most of us have been spending around $5 per gallon, with some of our friends over in California paying well over $7 per gallon. Of course, President Biden's response to that is outrageous what the war in Ukraine is causing. This is it's outrageous what the war in Ukraine is causing. And we're trying very hard to make sure that we can, we've significantly increased the number of, of barrels of oil that are being pumped out of the, the reserve we have. We've got 240,000 barrels as well coming out, uh, uh, from other nations. We're going to keep pushing on it. It's going to keep pushing. Okay, okay, thank you guys. Of course, this seemed to be Biden's plan all along. Honestly, the president really couldn't care less about American families struggling. Would there be any place for fossil fuels, including coal and fracking, in a Biden administration? No, it would be, we, would, we would work it out. We would make sure it's eliminated. No more drilling on federal lands. No more drilling, including offshore. No ability for the oil industry to continue to drill, period. I guarantee you. We're going to end fossil fuel. What about, say, stopping fracking and stopping yes. new pipeline infrastructure? Yes. New pipeline. And, and, exactly. and no more, no new fracking. We are going to get rid of fossil fuels. I've argued against any more oil drilling or gas drilling on federal lands. No one's going to build a coal-fired plant again, and we're going to get rid of the ones we have now. Have a transition from the oil industry, yes. Would you be willing to sacrifice some of that growth even knowing potentially that it could displace thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of blue collar workers in the interest of transitioning to that greener economy? The answer is yes. Joe Biden's press secretary, Karine Jean-Pierre said that we should all remember where this country was when Biden walked into office. Of course, what she forgot to mention was Biden walking into office with a working vaccine, $2.39 gas, higher markets, and inflation at just 1.4%. He has made this uh, his top economic priority as we're talking about inflation, as we're talking about uh, the economy. Like, we have to remember where this country was uh, more than a year ago when he walked into office. The economy uh, was not in a great place. Uh, schools were closed. Businesses were closed. We didn't have a comprehensive uh, COVID, uh, uh, COVID strategy. And what he ended up doing was meet that moment, pass the American Red Rescue plan. Only Democrats uh, pa uh, uh, passed that plan. He signed it. It was his plan. And now we're seeing an economy that's bouncing back. So Biden and his aides continue lying through their teeth. But at this point, they don't really have any other options. Lie to the American people. And of course, hope that we all go along with it. But on that note, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this video. If you enjoyed the content in today's video and you would like to see more like it, Make sure to give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, and also make sure to ring the notification bell. That way you will be the first to be notified when I do release future videos. And until next time, have a wonderful day ahead and stay informed my friends.